Hello, my name is Barry Black, and welcome to the Hope Channel and to Higher Ground. The purpose of this program is to take you to the next level of spiritual excellence. And that is exactly what's going to happen. Jesus wants to do in our lives exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or imagine. Come and go with me to higher ground. Black, and welcome to Higher Ground. My soul has no desire to stay, where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim, is Higher Ground. We're going to be talking today about Dress for Success because those who are going to go to the next level of spiritual excellence must dress for success. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. And so we really need to learn what a Christian should look like. And if we're going to be all that God would have us to be, there are some things that we need to take off and there are some things that we need to put on. We need to dress for success. I retired from the United States Navy in 2003. I was an admiral, and admirals and generals go through something called a transition assistance program. We go through a program where people are trying to get us to see what we need to do to succeed in the civilian sector. After all, we've spent 20 or more years wearing a uniform, and we needed to learn how to be competitive in the civilian market. I sat in that class, that transition assistance class and learned how to interview for a job and even learned what kind of suit I should wear for a job interview, what kind of shirt, what kind of tie. tie. They were trying to help me to dress for success. Now, they didn't recommend bow ties. I started wearing those on my own. So I hope that uh, those who taught me are not upset with my special move. But even as in that transition assistance class, I learned how to dress to be competitive in the civilian market. We need to learn how to dress for success in the realm of spiritual fitness. I want to talk about three things that we need to put off. Three things that we need to put off. The first is found in Luke chapter 9, beginning with verse 46. The Bible says, Then a dispute arose among them as to which of them would be greatest. And Jesus, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a little child and set him by him and said to them, Whoever receives this little child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. For he who is least among you all will be great. If you are going to dress for success, you need to first of all put off 
ambition. Unsanctified ambition. The disciples were arguing among themselves about which one would be the greatest. They thought that Jesus was about to set up an earthly kingdom. They had unsanctified ambition. If you're going to dress for success when it comes to spiritual fitness, put off unsanctified ambition. Jeremiah 45, verse 5, put it this way. Seekest thou great things for thyself? Seek them not. Unholy ambition can keep us from maximizing our possibilities as Jesus would have us to do. I remember when I was first in chaplain school in Newport, Rhode Island, many years ago. We had to go to the uniform shop and get our first military uniform. I went to the uniform shop, and I looked at the uniforms, and I saw a military hat. That military hat was beautiful. It had scrambled eggs, gold on the cover. And I said, I like that hat. It's prettier than the other hats. The clerk said, you have to be a senior officer to wear this hat. I said, oh, I like it. I'm, I'm going to get it anyhow. The next day we had a formation, and I came in my new uniform, and I should have known I was the only one who was wearing that hat with the gold all on the, on the cover. And people were looking at me with some amusement, and I was informed that the clerk was indeed right, that I needed to be a Navy commander to wear that hat. Well, I had ambition, and I wanted to look good, but it wasn't the right ambition. And I had to wait for the right time to wear the appropriate uniform of a senior officer. Put off unsanctified ambition. In fact, the best ambition is the ambition that seeks to serve others. The best ambition is the ambition that seeks to join our Lord in bringing deliverance to captives and balm to the bruised. So the first thing that you need to take off is unsanctified ambition. The second thing that you need to take off is intolerance. We find that in Luke chapter 9, beginning with verse 49. Now John answered, and said, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him, because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to him, Do not forbid him, for he who is not against us is on our side. Jesus wanted his people to put off intolerance. Here they saw a man being helped, our Lord's disciples. This man was being helped. A demon was being exercised. But this man, who was performing the exorcism, did not have the disciples' credentials, did not belong to their group. And the disciples thought that they were the exclusive representatives of Jesus Christ, that no one could do what they could do. Do you feel sometimes like you have a monopoly on representing Jesus Christ? Take off that garment of intolerance if you are going to be a new creature in Christ Jesus. Put it off. I'm so glad that Jesus was not intolerant with the dying thief in Luke chapter 23. Our blessed Lord was on the cross dying for the sins of the world. A thief 
who had only a little earlier been cursing our Savior, had a change of heart. He turned to his partner and said, Man, don't you fear God, seeing that we are in the same condemnation and this man has done nothing amiss? And then turning to the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, he said to Jesus, Remember me, Lord, when you come in your kingdom. And our Lord accepted that humble prayer. This man was not theologically appropriate. He had been cursing Jesus only a few minutes before. But that was okay. For John 3.17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If we are going to be like Jesus Christ, we must put off the garment of intolerance. We must learn to celebrate the power of God being manifested regardless of who is doing it. In Philippians chapter 1, the apostle Paul talked about people who were preaching Jesus Christ from a selfish motive. They were preaching Jesus Christ out of envy. But Paul said, it doesn't matter. I still rejoice because Christ is being preached. Paul had put off the garment of intolerance. There's a third garment that we must take off if we are going to be new creatures in Christ and dress for success. It's the garment of vindictiveness. And we see this also in Luke's Gospel chapter 9, the garment of vindictiveness in verse 51. Now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered a village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his faith was set for the journey to Jerusalem. And when the disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, You do not know what manner of spirit you are of, for the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Put off the garment of vindictiveness. I once had a senior chaplain tell me, I don't like you. And if I ever get a chance to hurt your career, I'm going to do that. I outrank you, he said, and one day I'm going to be sitting on a promotion board, and your name is going to come up, and I'm going to do what I can to make sure that you are not promoted. Now, that is a terrible thing for a junior chaplain to hear from a command chaplain. But I claim the promise of Isaiah 54, 17, that no weapon formed against me would be able to prosper. Eventually, I started getting promoted. Fortunately, this command chaplain never sat on a promotion board when my name came up. And I eventually passed him by a couple of levels. And he came one day to work for me. And I was tempted in the flesh to be vindictive. But if we are going to be new creatures in Christ, we must put off vindictiveness. We can put it off because Romans 12, 19 
tells us vengeance belongs to God. It states vengeance belongs to God. He will repay. We can put it off because we are taught to pray in Matthew chapter 6, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. My opportunity to be forgiven by God is linked to my willingness to forgive others. So put off those three garments. Put off the garment of ambition. Put off the garment of intolerance. Put off the garment of vindictiveness. But when you put off garments, you've got to put something on. And 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, helps us to see what we should put on. It tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of self-discipline. We need to, first of all, put on the garment of love. In Romans chapter 13, verse 10, we are told that love is the fulfillment of the law. Galatians 5.14 tells us that if you love your neighbor as yourself, you have fulfilled the law. So when you've taken off ambition and intolerance and vindictiveness, put on love. It is the most powerful force in the universe. When I was very young, I wanted to get my mother a Mother's Day present. I didn't have very much money, so I went down to the corner store, and don't ask me why, but I got a five-cent box of wild cherry cough drops and a five-cent uh, package of tissue. Now, my mother didn't have a cough or anything, but that's what I got. I wrapped it up in the bag that it came in. I gave it to my mother. And I tell you, with some trepidation, I wondered if I had made a mistake as she opened up this package for her Mother's Day present. She looked at the cough drops. She looked at the package of tissue, and tears filled her eyes. And I thought I had done something terribly wrong. But then she opened her arms, and she said to me, you are the sweetest son any mother could possibly have. And she took me in her arms and embraced me because she was thrilled by my paltry gift. Anything we give to God is paltry. His love is amazing. But motivated by love, he accepts our gifts and he rejoices in our gifts. He loved us so much that if you were the only person on the planet who needed salvation, Jesus would have come and died for you. One hymn writer put it this way, could we with ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made and every blade of grass a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the oceans dry. Nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 tells us, we were redeemed not with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of the Lamb. Clothe yourself in love, for God is love. Secondly, put on the garment of power. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and power. God wants you and me to have power. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, You will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, 
and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. I believe the Holy Spirit is alive and well on planet earth and wants you to have that kind of power. Luke chapter 11, 13 says, If you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more is your heavenly Father willing to give his Holy Spirit, hallelujah, his Holy Spirit <laughs> to those who ask him. You can have the Holy Spirit and have power. I teach a Bible study on Capitol Hill, and one day in my Bible study, a young staffer came in. She had a sprained ankle. And I said, well, I'm going to pray for you. The Bible study was over, and she limped away. But as she went through my office to go back to where she worked at, in the House of Representatives, my chief of staff, Dr. Kieran, saw her and said, what is wrong with your ankle? And she told him that it was a severe strain, and that is why she had a bandage and these special boots on. Well, my chief of staff believed in power. He said, we will have none of that. He sat her down. He laid hands on her. He prayed in the mighty name of Jesus that she would be restored to health from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. She limped from the office, but on the way over to where she was trying to go, her destination, she felt very little discomfort. She kept walking and eventually felt no discomfort. She reached down and took off the special shoe she had on and the bandages. And the next day, she was standing in my office, <laughs> standing there in jogging shoes, rejoicing because she had received healing power from the prayers of a man of God. And the Holy Spirit rebuked me. He said, in my spirit, I wanted to do that through you, but you did not have enough faith. Put on the garment of power. Finally, put on the garment of self-discipline. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline, says Second Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. We need self-discipline. That's a garment that will enable us to go to the next level of spiritual excellence. I am told that Thomas Edison, in his effort to find the filament for the incandescent light bulb, tried more than 5,000 different things. One of his assistants said, Mr. Edison, we are failing miserably. But Edison said, we're not failing we're doing quite well. We now know more than 5,000 things that will not work. And Edison had the self-discipline to persevere, to hang in there. My son, who was about to graduate from medical school, came home and said to me, Dad, how many push-ups have you done, the maximum number of push-ups you've ever done? And I said, well, son, when I was about your age one time, I did 80 push-ups. I was pretty proud of that. He said, how would you like to do 100 push-ups? He said, there's a website that talks about how to do 100 push-ups. I said, son, I'm too old for that. But when he left, my pride got the better of me. And I went online to that website, how to do 100 push-ups. I just did what they told me to do, exercising the self-discipline that they told me to exercise. And in six weeks, with a little bit of self-discipline in the physical realm, I was able to do 
a hundred push-ups as an old man. If you can do that in the arena of the physical, think of what you will do if you put on the garment of self-discipline in the arena of the spiritual. So let's dress for success. We want the world to know that we are connected with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We want the world to know that we are connected with Jesus Christ who loved us enough to give himself for us. But we need a family resemblance. Put off, put off the garment of ambition, intolerance, vindictiveness, and put on the garment of love, of power, and of self-discipline. One day, people who are looking at you will be able to say, I have seen a sermon because of the life you are living. Edgar Guest put it this way, I'd rather see your sermon than hear it any day. I'd rather it should walk with me than merely tell the way. The eyes are better pupils and more willing than the ears. Fine counsel is confusing, but example always clear. And best of all the teachers are the ones who live their creed. For to see good put in action is what everybody needs. People will see good put in action. If you take off the garments of ambition, of intolerance and vindictiveness, and put on love, power, and self-discipline, dressing for success.